Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing a review on my wind bandsaw. It is model 3959. And for a small bandsaw, it's it's pretty good. It's not great. It's not horrible. So it's just it's in that middle range. I will say this before we get fully into into this thing. If you make a lot of big projects, if you need a you know a good size bandsaw, you won't need to split boards. Get your floor model. Don't go with this one. I've tried it, and in my opinion, it, it is it does a horrible job. But if what you're doing, you need just decent cuts, small uh, small boards. As you can tell the table on this is not very big. Then what? This is great. Is what you want for it. So for your blade track and you do got a little window right here that helps watch it, it gets covered in sawdust and you can't see nothing. I'll, I'll be honest with you. This is actually the cleanest my bandsaw has ever been. It's usually covered in dust. So that helps anything. I do not have it hooked up to dust uh, my dust collector yet because my dust collector is actually right above it. So to get the right angle I would need, my pipe would have to go circle around and come back. So I, I haven't got it hooked up yet, but someday I might move and get it hooked up. Uh, I made a, just a makeshift stand and it does great. It's actually full of wood. So that, I'm sure that helps with weight. Uh, so this bandsaw, it's net weight is 40 pounds. So it, it's not heavy. If you're trying to really push boards into it, you know, of course you're not going to do it with a bandsaw anyways, but if you do get in a situation where you're out here and you're hanging on a board and you're, you know, you're trying to get them fed in, the weight issue might give you some trouble. So I've got mine bolted to this table so it won't fall over anything. Um, it does come with a fence, which is decent. Just learn your measurements out here. I like, instead of going all the way to the end, I like finding measurement in this, this little T-slot right here that's made for your push your push block as it your gauge as it comes through so I like measuring to there to get my measurement for where to set my fence because it's not on any kind of track or anything you know you can you can get out of square pretty fast and actually I, I just lost where I had it at so that's awesome you get a push stick with it. I've never used this push stick. It just sits right here as decoration. You can open it. I see some dust falling out there. A lot of dust falling out the bottom. Yeah, I didn't clean the bottom. So you can open uh, your doors up and you can see your blade. You can see position of your blade. You can see all your dust that's in there. And it's got a little guard right here. Like if you go change your blade, it's got a little guard right here that says push in cover to open. That don't work. You actually got to pull out over here to open. So. And I notice on these gears right here, that goes for your raising. You gotta loosen it up back here and you go to raising your guide here. They get sawdust in them sometimes and you'll go right there. They get caught up, bound up in your gear. So you can't go up any past that. Sometimes you can't go down any past that. You gotta take a, uh, I took a pick and went in there and just try to scrape that out and that's helped a whole lot. I don't actually have to raise it and lower it as much. But if you do, that helps. Of course, the big wheel on top here, that's for your tensioning of your blade. I have broke a blade before because your alignment, you've got a bearing behind here that helps, just helps keep it flowing. And then you got two little blocks right here to keep it from swaying. But you got Allen screws, you can tighten up and you can or you can loosen them up and adjust them blocks. So I had just way too tight and it just got bound up and snapped that blade right in two. I tried ordering one off Amazon and that blade was way too big. It's actually right here. 
that blade was way too big. So I went, um, ordered it from Win, and it was a lot better. I mean, it was the, the actual replacement blade. So if if you do do buy the Spanish saw, do break the blade, go with the actual blade that needs instead of just trying to find one. I got sawdust everywhere. But back here, you got a dust port and the motor. Yes, I got more sawdust. And you can take, see, I've never done this. I just try to keep my table on, on a level 90. And you can take and put this table on 45. Got numbers on there, but they're covered with all the But you can flatten her out, and that's just what I keep her on. You got an arm right here. This is for this top wheel for tracking the blade. Your dust ports nice. and your motors That's pretty down much here. all there is to about this bandsaw. It's not the best thing. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's also not the worst. I've, I've had worse tools. Let me show you something that I absolutely love that Wynn does a great job with. And actually, I wish more uh, tool manufacturers done this. You got kids in the shop, you know, customers coming in all the time. You cannot turn this on without this. The only problem with that, you might lose these. So, I love that option. Now. It is kind of loud, especially when you go and actually uh, feeding wood in. I use hearing protection. When I use this, just like when I use my planer or my joiner. So, if you're interested in a bandsaw, you don't want to break the bank. This win, 39, 39, 59, 9-inch bandsaw. It's a pretty good bandsaw. It ain't great, but if you're worried about price, you're not worried about great. This is a good bandsaw to buy. Y'all have a good day. If you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. If you got any questions or comments, hey, feel free to put them in there. Y'all have a good one.